Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is seventh lecture of this segmentary series. And in this lecture, we are going to implement lazy propagation that we have seen in previous lecture. So we already know that how, or uh, theoretically, we already know that how segmentary works. So we will be having two different trees, two different arrays, one for segmentary, one for lazy. This is kind of your diary where you keep your pending updates. So suppose there is, I've already explained the all already these things, but I'm uh, going through these again so that uh, when I'm going to show you the code, this looks familiar, right? So we have a, a query to update range four to eight, and for all of the elements add two to eight. So all of the elements from four to eight add two to eight. So what you do, you go to the parent node and you see. You start from here you see this range does not completely lies in this range but there are overlaps so what you do you made two recursive calls you'd make two recursive calls to update left and right once you reach right you see okay five and eight is complete uh, five and eight lies completely inside my query range which is four and eight so this whole node should be updated so what you do uh, since the number of uh, number of nodes from the array the range contains four elements right so and each of the element will be incremented by two so the overall increment here would be of four times two which is eight so this would become nine so if i show you the code first of all let's start from here so max and i have taken to be 10 to the power 5 assuming there are 10 to the power 5 number of elements in the array this is the input array and this is segmentary and this is lazy so as you can see lazy is same as segmentary nothing change here uh, for build uh, for let's start from main function so n and q the number of nodes number of queries and after reading n and q we are building the segmentary why because initial all initially all of the elements in the array are equal to zero right that is why we don't need to take any input for uh, input array that is why we can directly build so in the build function nothing would change there so if you are following the this series the segmentary series you already know what is si ss and se segment index segment start and segment end so if segment start is equal to segment end that is you are on the base case then you would initialize segmentary to be equal to ar of ss and ar of ss is actually zero right so in this case you actually do not need to build the segmentary because all of the nodes of segmentary are already going to be zero so you actually do not need to do anything because when you initialize the any array globally in c plus plus or c they are already initialized with zero we didn't need to do this but we all uh, we just do it it helps you when uh, it is a good practice to build the segmentary because there may be cases there are cases where uh, initial initial array may contain elements so after doing this of course you would divide if segment start is not equal to segment end of course you would divide the whole range in two parts and build the left and the right subtree and then initialize the current node with the result of left and right subtree this is all we have already seen in the previous lectures of segmentary mm -hmm. so we are not going into the details of it sorry there was vibration of my phone i guess uh after that there are q queries so each time we are reading code code is either one or two one means a uh, query of this range otherwise the update update this range and add val that is value to all of the elements in uh, from l to r now first let's go for query uh, let's go for we have already seen the update query so let's go for update query so in update query what is happening no let me show you first the query because you are already familiar with the code of query so you see in the query we already take five parameters segment index segment start and segment end this is like the uh, the important parameters of every single function of segmentary you always need segment index segment start and segment end. then now you need the uh, uh, the range sum of 
ये दिस इज क्वेरी स्टार्ट एंड दिस इज क्वेरी एंड सो यू वॉन्ट रेंज सम फ्रॉम क्वेरी स्टार्ट टू क्वेरी एंड दिस इज बेसिकली योर एल एंड आर सो वॉट यू डू जस्ट इग्नोर दिस कोड फॉर नाउ वॉट यू डू यू चेक whether the current range is completely outside the range of your query then in that case you would return zero if the current range is completely inside your query range then you directly return the sum stored at the segment tree right otherwise you would divide the range in two parts make two queries one on the left uh, left subtree and one on the right subtree because you you are dividing the whole range in two parts from segment start to mid and mid plus one to segment end and then return the sum of the two queries right this is what happens in the uh, in the normal range query function this is nothing but range query function the only thing that change is this now whenever you reach some node you check whether there are pending updates or not so uh, you are currently at this index segment index so in the lazy tree you you would see whether lazy of si is zero or not lazy of si is not equals to zero which means there are pending updates if there are pending updates what you do you uh, you take that element from there and you would see uh, you need to add in this whole range you need to add this value if this is not equals to zero currently uh, in this representation lazy tree contains nothing because there are no pending updates whenever you reach any node in either the query or update first thing you do is check whether the uh, whether there are pending updates or not if there are pending ad updates what you do you take that update okay and then you set the lazy to be zero because now you are handling that update so the pending update should be equal to zero because now after handling that there should not be any pending updates so in the segment tree you would add the pending update times the number of elements what we just did here we added eight because this range represents four different elements and all of those will be updated by dx all of those are going to be incremented by dx so what you would do you take dx and add in the segment tree you would add dx times number of elements in the range in the current range that is segment start to segment end so se minus ss plus r basically r minus l plus 1 so now segment tree current node is updated after doing that you see whether the left and the right child already exist there if the left and the right child already update what you would do uh, sorry if the left and the right child already exist what you would do you would pass the pending updates to those so you see whether segment start is not equal to segment end that means there are left and right childs in that case in the lazy tree the left child you would increment by dx and the right child you would increment by dx basically you are passing the pending updates to your left and the right child so this is the first thing you would do in query as well as in update whenever you reach certain node you would see whether there are uh, pending updates or not if there are pending updates you would handle them so the query part is completed this is the normal query part without lazy propagation and this is the only thing that you need to add this to make a lazy propagation uh, lazy propagation segmentary so this part as explained earlier is also there in the update so update takes five parameter five yeah six parameter segment index segment start and segment end these are like the must must be their parameters and this is the query start and query end basically your l and r which are needed to be incremented by this value val right so we need six parameters again the same thing whenever you reach any node you see whether there are pending updates or not if there are pending updates handle them that's all the first part is clear second part the everything else goes like the query range query thing in the range query what we do you see here if the current range is completely outside your range you simply return zero because that range is outside your range so that uh, that adds nothing to your solution that is why we are returning zero because we are talking about the range sum here the same thing happens you are you are coming to update this range query start and query end and if the current range that is segment start and segment end is completely outside your query range that is 
this range will not be updated in that case you would simply return so things are happening the same way happen uh, whatever is happening in the range query thing i have already explained in the previous lecture how lazy propagation update and range sub are similar so if the current range is completely outside your query range because so that means you don't have to update anything in the current range that is why you would simply return otherwise see in the range sum what we are doing if the current range is completely inside your query range right again we are doing the same thing if the current range is completely inside your query range in that case current node needs to be updated uh, the same thing happened what we did just here we saw the current range completely inside our query range so what we did uh, we updated or increment the current range by number of elements in the range multiplied by value so that is the thing what we are going to do so number of elements in this range are this and each element will be incremented by value so dx is equals to number of elements in this range multiplied with, with uh, value so the current node will be uh, will be incremented by dx and dx is this if there are left and right child what you would do you would not update them instead you would pass the updates or you would pass the pending updates so you would mark them as pending update for them so that you don't have to go down in the segment tree and you can simply return from here so you would see whether your left and right child exists so segment star should not be equal to segment end in that case you are passing the pending updates to your child after that you are simply returning whatever uh, this is same as this so if the current range completely lies uh, in the query part if the current range completely lies inside your query range you simply return uh, the sum of it right similarly what we are doing here since we are here to update so we won't of course return the sum but we would update it so if the current range completely lies inside your query range you simply update the current segmentary uh, node and then pass pass the pending update to your child so in the lazy tree your left and the right child are being incremented or are being passed the uh, pending update after that you would simply return if in the range sum if that not happens what you do you divide the whole range in two parts and make two recursive calls to find query the same we would do here we divide if this condition doesn't hold we would divide the whole range in two parts of course segment start plus segment and divide by two and then we would update the left subtree and the right subtree and remember one thing whenever you are working with update either your left or right uh, right subtree changes then you must update the current node so what we are doing we are updating the left and the right uh, child after that we are updating the current node of the segmentary this is simply since we are storing the sum so segmentary of uh, the current node is equal to sum of the values of the left and the right subtree this is all so if i show you by running this come on this should not take this much time okay so let's say we have 10 elements okay and these many queries so let's so this is first type of query first type of query means range sum range sum of all of the nodes from oh, sorry all of the elements in the array from 1 to 10 so result should be 0 because all of the elements are initial initially 0 now let's the let's change the first element to be 10 so second type of query add 10 to all of the elements in the range 1 to 1 basically update the first element to be 10 done now perform the first query again what is the sum from first to 10 element all of all of the elements in that range so of course it's going to be 10 let's do a uh, some uh, range update from 1 to 10 and add 10 so basically in the array all of the element are going to be incremented by 10 so index 1 is going to be 20 because there are two different updates for index 1 index 2 to 10 all of the elements are going to be 10 so let's go for the range sum this is going to be 110 because from 1 to 10 all of the elements if were if 
all of the elements were 10 the result would have been 100 but position 1 is equals to 20 so the result is going to be 110 so you can run this code i'll be posting the link to the uh, link to this code in the description as well so that you can read the code and try to understand it as explained earlier this is literally very easy you already know how to write down your query write, uh, write down the query just add this condition just just take care of the pending updates similarly for update just take care of the pending update and after that do the same thing that we do in the range query thing so these all should be familiar to you because we all have been doing this from range sum query from lecture i guess two or three so this was all for this lecture if you have any doubt or query of course you can ask in the comment section or on the article that i have created for this course so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you